All right, I'm going to cover this quickly for Salvatore, and then I'm going to cover Ben's question. I think Ben had to leave, but I'm still going to cover his question so we have the archive there. So Salvatore says, Mike, if there's time, can you cover the Fusion service, which might be interested? I'm not aware of its potential. At first glance, it looks like an overlap of power options, but I'm sure it's not. The Fusion subscription at Radioactive Trading is vastly different from Power Options. The Fusion service here, what it does is this is only related to the married put positions and the approach in the blueprint that I had mentioned that discusses the 12 different income methods and more. What Fusion subscribers have access to is a variety of timed lessons that come out in sort of a drip content format every two to three days you get a new lesson all related to the married put approach the 12 different income methods in the blueprint and uh trade examples and things of that nature oh okay ben i'm gonna get to you just one second no worries the open trades trades tracker this shows ernie and my positions right now in the married puts we both only have two open right now Ally Financial is the one I bulletproof, meaning I have a negative at risk. The worst I can do is make 0.2% with a dividend payment coming in the next couple of weeks, I think, and earnings coming up uh, right around October expiration, the 15th as well. Uh, so that's a bulletproof trade. And then the Barry's got a long way to go on it and uh, not loss wise, but it's got a fair ways to go on it as well. So I'm not worried that it's down right now. It dropped from 70 to about 61, came back up to 62. Um, so I'm doing some methods there to get that back into control and lower that potential at risk. But it's out till uh, February, I think, if not March. Um, oh, I'm sorry, in that case. Okay, so the RPM report is the similar portion to Power Options, Salvatore. This is just a married put search that's based on the Power Options tool to identify married puts that match our preferred criteria that's in the blueprint, same as the default married put search on Power Options. So it's just showing you potential married puts as trading ideas that match the criteria and what we would follow in the blueprint itself. Okay, so there we go. There's five or six positions. Um, Blackstone was one I was considering. I'm not doing Exxon because I think Ernie, oh, sorry about that. Ignore the custom note field there. Uh, that's for me. <laughs> uh, this is not what you would normally see in that, that, that field is not what you normally see. The stock insurance tool is similar to what you have on Power Options Salvatore in the sense that it is giving you um, the, the same as the insurance tool in Power Options where you have a stock that's up in price. You can put in the stock price, your purchase price, excuse me, and it'll show you the best puts to buy to either lock in your unrealized profit and have no risk or have a low risk position uh, locking in your unrealized profit on the stock that's up in price. And then Fusion subscribers also have members only white papers, members only webinars and white papers, uh, concepts and ideas on the married put trading. Uh, thing, playing the bear side of the market with the married put structure, even capturing more of your stocks moves, of course. And then the other pod you saw here, this is for blueprint owners. So if you're a blueprint owner and you're not subscribed to Fusion, you still have a variety of uh, blueprint owner only webinars. Some of them are similar to what's in the Fusion ones. Um, and the latest blueprint reversions as well in that case. So that's what's available in Fusion. It's directly related only to the married put positions and the 12 different income methods that we discuss in the blueprint and in the home study kit. Um, you do have a basic search for married puts, but you can't change the criteria. It's just showing you what our preferred criteria, if we ran our search on power options with the preferred criteria for the married put approach, what results would match it, okay? And then, of course, uh, you don't have a portfolio tool here to track your positions, but there's various lessons to help you master the ideas in the blueprint uh, faster. And, of course, the tracking, you can follow earnings in our trades as examples and how we trade the married put approach and use those 12 different income methods in our account. Of course, there's a, you can view the full track record, too, if you're a subscriber to Fusion also. And that's essentially what's there. Okay, that's what Fusion does for you. Okay, Ben, my apologies. Great. Let's take uh, Ben here. Ben says, what should I be aware of right in covered calls if the stock is falling? I had a cover call expire twice and I wrote a third one. My net cost keeps dropping, but I realize I could follow the stock into the ground. That's exactly right. Last week we had a discussion. And let me tell you, so we're going to use Barry Plastics. And anyway, 
we had a discussion, Ben, last week about using the naked puts. This was for uh, the, the John's webinar we had mentioned where we went back and looked how they performed during that September 2020 position. We weren't following the same stock, Ben. What we were doing is picking new positions every Monday for the following Friday, four days away for weekly naked puts and how that search result and the new positions that matched panned out against the 10% decline that happened over that three-week period in September of 2020. The risk of following a stock down and why I bring up the naked put discussion is because in the weekly naked puts and the um, weekly covered call picks of the day discussion, Ben, Ernie suggests that just like they follow at IBD and other services, that if the stock falls 7% from when you got in, even though you can keep rolling down your covered call positions, you might want to consider getting out of the position because you're always going to be losing more on the stock than you can potentially gain with the call premium, all right? You're lowering your cost basis on the stock, which is great. But remember, if you're selling calls that are below your cost basis for the stock, you run the risk of getting assigned for a loss. And I'm, gonna, I'm using very plastic because this is one of the ones I'm in. I think it was September 2nd is what I want to look at. That's when the stock was at 70. I'm going to take the worst possible time to get into this position. And what are we going to do? We're going to do two things. I'm going to go back to the option chain for Barry. We're going to look at calls only. And I want to go to September 2nd. Now, this isn't a great example because it doesn't have weekly options. It only has standard expiration. But we're going to be okay with that for the time being. So what am I going to, what am I trying to see here, Ben? What I want to see here is when Barry was up near that $70 range, 68.59, I think was the high, 68.80. Uh, something along those lines, I'm going to sell a 70 call on Berry Plastics for September expiration. Now, I know it expired worthless, but I want to see what the prices were, and we can evaluate tracking that in the portfolio past September expiration, of course. There we go. So stock was at, yeah, 68.66 at the close. And the 70 September, okay, we're going to call it 60 cents, Ben. Not fantastic, but we're going to call it 60 cents. Okay, so we bought the stock at 68.80 and we sold the September 70 for 60 cents. And let's say we let it expire worthless. Where does that put us? That puts us at a cost basis of 68.20. Now, let's go to November. I'm sorry, September 20th. So what do we know? This was after expiration. We held it for those 15 days from September 2nd to September 17th expiration. Sold the 70 call for 60 cents, knocked down our cost basis, spend the 68.20. Now my stock's at 60.68. I might have tried to roll beforehand, maybe go down to the 65 call halfway through that decline somewhere for October's expiration. But again, now that it's dropped so far, well, I can't sell the October 67.50. It's only 10 cents. Uh, 33 cents for the 65. I could get 93 cents for the 62.50. But what happens to that position? Remember now, I'm running the risk of getting assigned at a loss. Right? So let's say we add the stock in with our cost of 68. 20. I'm sorry, 68.20. I kept saying 68.60. We got 60 cents. I'm going to put it at 68.20. And then we sold the October 62 and a half. Well, it's now $1.45, but we would have sold it for 94 cents, 95 cents is what we saw on that day. Does this continue to lower my cost basis, Ben? Absolutely. And if I sell it, you get a better graph of what I'm talking about. Awesome. But what am I? I'm potentially locked into a loss of 7.1%. Now, I'm not saying that I expect this stock to jump suddenly above 62.50 or maybe even above 65, which would still be a locked in loss in the position. This gets dangerous chasing the stock down because if there is any unexpected good news, if there is an early earnings uh, awards promise, you know, they come out and say they're definitely going to exceed it. They're going to have to reevaluate their targets for the year. They do that early. Usually it's negative, but sometimes they do it positive and the stock suddenly goes back to 68 or 69. Where am I now? Uh, 68 or 69, I'm paying six, seven, eight dollars 
to buy back this call to stay in the position and not get assigned at a 7.1% loss. I followed it down and the only premiums that were good were selling here. Even if I went out to December, I'm probably like getting a buck 50, a buck 70. I'm not getting that eight points back where the stock has fallen below my cost basis. I could go out a year with the at the money strike at 60 or 62 and a half on Barry Plastics and might not see the $8 I'm missing. Well, okay, it's technically $6 now. So in that case, maybe I could do that. But this is what the risk is of it continuing to just say, hey, if the stock keeps falling, I'm just going to roll down. I'm just going to keep rolling down, just keep rolling down. There's a gentleman who used to do in-service uh, seminars years and years and years ago in the early 2000s and then a uh, little bit after that. And he would teach covered calls and diagonal calendar spreads. And <laughs> his some of his attendees would ask, well, what happens if the stock falls 10%? He, says, he would yell at them. He'd say, don't worry about it. You don't care if the stock falls. Just keep selling calls. That's all you do. It could go down 20%. Just keep selling calls. Go down 30%. Just keep selling calls. He didn't really have an answer. And it's better than what? Even if it's better to stay sort of a 7% loss, take that if the stock falls 7% from when you got in, maybe consider just exiting the positioning, Ben, instead of just keep rolling down. Why? Because that's better than taking a 10, 12, 15, 20, 25% loss when you're only getting one 1.5% back with a 20 or 30 day covered call premium. You're losing more as the stock's falling three or 4% than you're getting back with the premium or you're running the risk of selling something that's 90, 120, 180, 300 days out in time to get a 4 or $5 premium to help get you back to break even. That's the danger you can run in with just trying to follow the covered call down, Ben. Now, I'm assuming that this was a new position, that I got in at 68.80 uh, when we, we got into the position on September 2nd, the worst possible price. We sold, got 60 cents premium for the 70 call for 15 days. That lowered our cost basis down to 68.20. Yes, I've lowered my cost basis down to 67.25. But to do that, I had to agree to give up my shares of 62.50. That's a loss. The best case scenario is a loss of only $475. That's not an attractive position. I might have been better in this case just closing the stock out when it dropped to 65, or maybe I would have rolled my original 70 September call out to the October 65 to make a couple bucks back, but it still kept declining. You saw it was a bottom was about $60. I think it even went below $60 once intraday trading during this time period. Um, now, why am I still in Berry Plastics with the Fusion portfolio we just discussed? That's because I have it as a married put position. It's not a covered call position. I have a max risk of, I think, 7.2%. That's the worst case scenario further out in time, the next four, five, six months. Okay. So it's okay. I can use the put here. I can take the profit off the put that I have and move it down to lower my cost basis on the position. I'm not worried about it because it's not a covered call where my loss would be down here. And as you can see, I'm chasing it and chasing it and chasing it. In this case, I was in a married put. So I can take the profit off of this put to lower my cost basis here. I'm chasing after an increasing loss position with only gaining one, one and a half percent back. Okay. Richard says in this scenario I'm looking at right now, uh, it says, uh, I'm sorry, Richard says in this scenario you're looking at right now is now change from covered calls to a collar. Well, as a strategy going forward in new positions, if you're concerned about continued losses such as this, Richard, or stocks continuing to fall, yes. What's the problem with taking this position I have now, Richard, and adding it as a standard collar position, converting it as it is now to a standard collar? I'm already behind the eight ball because I'm well below my cost basis with the strike price of this call and I didn't collect enough premium. Now buying a put would stop further disastrous losses to the downside, but it's going to lock in the 7.1% loss plus whatever time value I have to pay into the put position. So do we have a 57.50? Yes, we do. It's only 30 cents. That's not bad. Let's go ahead and add that in. So I buy the put now to convert my losing covered call into a collar. Does this repair it? No. In fact, it lowers the max return from a loss of 7% to 7.4. This collar by itself, if I opened it today, would probably be a profitable one. Selling the 60, uh, 62 and a half call the stock at 62.39 and buying the 57 and a half put. But 57 and a half with my cost base of 67.52 now 
that's still 10 points, isn't it? That's the maximum risk. It's take it's capping the loss where I couldn't lose much further, but it's 10 points down from where I still am, plus the extra 35 cents. So that's where we are in this case. That's where we run into these positions. Um, it's not necessarily a good idea. What a better idea is, oh, let me just look at this first real quick while we're on this discussion there. Uh, Richard, I'm sorry. 62.39 is what we have today. Buy stock today at 62.30. This is not a recommendation or suggestion. Um, just a sample. 62.39 today, 95 cents for the October. Oh, no, it was higher, wasn't it? It was $1.45. That was if we had done it on the 20th. All right, so we do $1.35 at midpoint. There we go. And, oh, sorry, folks. Let's put 28 cents here. Round it up. Great. Ugh, not what I would prefer, Richard. Again, what I mentioned I prefer for this even 15, 20 days out in time, I'm looking for a max profit of 2 2.5% 2 with a risk of around 4 4.5%. 4 this is too high of a risk for too little return for me on this particular collar position. Barry's not as much, not that volatile. It doesn't have a lot in there as well uh, in that case. A better approach maybe, and we, we saw for it, this one isn't going to be a good example. I keep selling covered calls down and I'm losing more on the stock than I'm getting back in the premium, even going 90 days out, 100 days out, 20 days out. Okay, so eventually you want to have that trading plan in mind, Ben. Yes, it says gives me some bounds to keep in mind. Can't win them all. And it's unfortunate, but that's true. The collar would have protected more of the loss, but you would have taken away some of the profit. Where am I at right now? I bought the stock at 68.80, sold that 70 call for 60 cents. It expired and I'm at 68.20 cost basis. Probably will work for Barry, but another thing to consider is our stock repair tool. And the stock repair tool allows you to put in your cost per share, 68.20 after the call expired, a number of shares, of course. And what it tries to do is build a ratio spread to help you get back to break even. Mm. So in this case, it's not bad, but the only repair that's available, try to build a ratio call spread to help me get back to break even. And um, my new break even, if I did this, would be 63.80. I'd buy one 60 call and sell two 65 calls and get a credit of 60 cents. Well, well, that doesn't make sense, does it? If I get 60 cents, my cost basis drops down to 67.60, nowhere near 63.80. But what have I done? I bought a call at 60 and sold two 65s to get that net credit on the position. Small net credit, but that's what we did there. Got our 60 cents of net credit. So I only lowered my cost basis down to 67.60. But on the graph here, you see this acceleration course, as we get closer to expiration, you see this acceleration here going up. What is that? That's because the call that I bought and the stock are moving up in price. We sold two of those 65s and bought one of the 60, which does what? I've entered one bull call debit spread, one of the short calls plus the long 60 call with a covered call. So nothing is naked here, even though I'm doing a ratio call spread, nothing is naked in this situation. But this acceleration we see to help us get back to break even, if the stock was at 63.80, what happens? Well, I still have a cost basis of 67.20, or was it 67.60? That's uh, 67.60, I believe. Right, 67.60. And it shows me the break even at 63.80, of course, at March expiration. Because the 265s would still expire, I sell the stock at 63.80, and my long 60 call that I was paid to own is worth intrinsic value of 380. So sell to close the call at 380, sell to close the stock at 63.80. We get 67.60 back. We're back to break even, and we didn't need the stock to go back at 68.20 or even 67.60. That's the stock repair approach, and it can be very useful, but what do you need? Similar to what Richard just pointed out, or I'm sorry, what do you need? You need the stock and have the expectation that the stock is going to recover and move back up in price. Because if it continues down, the repair gave you an extra 60 cents of credit in this example. It won't always be 60 cents. Sometimes it'll be higher. Sometimes it'll be lower. But it didn't do anything to hedge the downside. And if it goes down to 56, earnings come out and it's poor and it goes down to 51, I'm losing more than I can make back again. 
just from selling calls, doing a stock repair or another position. Okay? If you have a stock that's down, Ben, this is a good point. Richard Richard didn't mention this, but something that, that comes up when Richard mentioned doing a caller. If you're in a down covered call and you've decided to stick with it and keep managing it, and you know, you're, you're lowering your cost basis, yes, every time you sell a call, but you may be running the risk of getting assigned for a loss if it bounces back very quickly. We're going into earnings season. Barry's uh, October 19th, I believe, uh, somewhere along those lines. Um, so if you're still doing that or you're still managing with a covered call in a stock that's down, if you're in that position or not, as you head to earnings, you may want to buy a slightly out of the money put to carry you through the earnings. Because if it falls 10, 12% from a missed opportunity, you're you're down that you're you're going down that wrong road again, right? We're down that road that you had mentioned you're afraid of, Ben. When do we cut it off? Because it just keeps going down and we're not getting near the premium. You got to be careful with the earnings coming up. Make sure your stocks, if you have any of those right now that are doing this, they have uh, that you buy a put on that if you're still trying to manage it because you can't afford to take another five, seven, ten percent loss of earnings, disappoint, or even worse, one of those ones that suddenly just falls 25 or 30 percent. Never make that back uh, on covered calls. It'll take you 35, 40 months to make that back roughly uh, just selling premium against it.